Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to study the poem The Torch of the Light Brigade written by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Poetry number no. 3 of class 10 English Literature. Before moving into the lesson, let us see who Alfred Lord Tennyson is. Alfred Lord Tennyson is a British poet who was born on 6 August 1809 in Somers by United Kingdom and he died on 6 October 1892 at Largesser, United Kingdom. He studied at Trinity College, Cambridge. So, uh, Alfred Lord Tennyson, he was one of the most well-known and well-loved Victorian poets. Victorian poets means those people who work during the reign of Queen Victoria. Uh, he was the poet laureate for United Kingdom from 1850 to 1892. Who is called a poet laureate? A poet laureate is an eminent poet appointed as a member of the British Royal Household. So, Alfred Lord Tennyson wrote uh, some famous books like In Memoriam and many poems like Morde D. Arthur, The Two Voices and The Vision of Sin and also his popular poem Crossing the Bar and the lesson which we are going to study today, uh, The Church of the Light Brigade. In 1829, Alfred Lord Tennyson was awarded with the Chancellor's Gold Medal for his literary work. Uh, before moving into the details of the poem, let us see uh, a little bit of the introduction of the poem. Alfred Lord Tennyson's poem, The Church of the Light Brigade, is one of the most frequently quoted and most controversial poems of the 19th century. The poem is the original source of the famous lines, Dares not to make reply or Dares not to reason why. Dares not but to die to do and die, and is often cited as the quintessential tribute to soldiers fighting in any war. The poem was inspired by an event that occurred on October 25, 1854, during the Crimean War. The attack by the British Light Cavalry Brigade, a force of fewer than 700 men, against more than 25,000 Russian soldiers. This incident is commonly acknowledged as one of the most catastrophic moments in military history. Some historians wonder why this event has become so uh, popular and so famous. Tens of thousands of soldiers died during the Crimean War, but fewer than 200 were killed in the church that the poem describes. However, both British and French civilians experienced the events of the war vicariously through eyewitness accounts of battles published in their newspapers. War correspondent um, William Howard Russell in particular caught Tennyson's attention with his dramatic and sensational narrative of the Church of the Light Brigade, which moved Tennyson to write the legendary poem, The Church of the Light Brigade. So, um, it took Tennyson less than an hour to write the poem on December 2, 1854. He sent it to the examiner in London where it was published the next week. He radically revised the poem when he published it a year later in uh, July 1855 in a collection with a longer and more substantial poem. Uh, and also Alfred Lord Tennyson wrote the poem The Church of the Light Brigade just four years after becoming poet laureate of Britain, a position that made him a member of the British royal household for life and that implicitly called for a patriotic poem. Uh, the ambiguity of the poem allowed it to celebrate military heroism during war and encourage political compromise to avoid pointless massacre 
it is remembered and repeated because it speaks to both perspectives. Uh, okay, now let us see or let us discuss uh, some of the literary devices or, or poetic terms used in the poem The Light of the Brig at the Charge of the Light Brigade. Firstly, let us see repetition. Rep- the poet used repetition. Uh, in sev- several times in the poem. So what is repetition? Repetition is the use of same word or phrase multiple times. So the repetition which is used in the poem uh, is uh, half of a leg, half a leg which is seen in the first line itself. And the second poetic term used is anaphora. Anaphora is the repetition of same words in the starting of a number of consecutive lines. The repetition of same words in the starting of a number of consecutive lines. So the anaphora which is used in this poem is canon to the right of them, canon to the left of them, canon in front of them. This is the anaphora used in the poem. And thirdly, we have alliteration. The alliter- alliteration used in the poem The Charge of the Light Brigade can be mentioned like Storm at with sot and self. This is alliteration. And next term which is used in the poem is personification. What is personification? Personification is a figure intended to represent an abstract quality. A figure which is intended to represent an abstract quality that is called personification and personification which is used in this poem is uh, like jaws of that value of that and next we have metaphor as I keep mentioning again and again metaphor is one literary device which is like used in almost every poem so what is a metaphor a metaphor is a comparison of two unlike things so here the comp- uh, the metaphor used in the poem is like jaw of that valley of that again and here the tone of the poem is valiant courageous and honoring both the uh, both the surviving soldiers and also the soldiers who had already died in that um, battle. Okay, moving on. Let us see what are the themes of this poem, The Charge of the Light Brigade. The first theme we, uh, we have here is uh, warfare. It describes the confusion, the terror, the bloodshed in the war. And the poem also describes the heroism and then the excitement of the armed combat. So, next theme we have courage. The soldiers or the cavalry of the light brigade were courageous. Every one of them charged forward to the enemy line bravely. They knew exactly how dangerous and hopeless the job was, but they did it anyway. They did it and it was possible only because of their courageousness. The next theme we have is death. Uh, many of the brave soldiers in the Light Brigade died in this battle. So death is one main theme of this poem. And next we have is duty. The soldiers uh, in the Light Brigade were doing the duty, doing their job. They were soldiers and it was the duty to fight. That's what made them heroic but it makes their death tragic. The soldiers, when they were uh, commanded to attack the enemy, they knew that they will be killed because looking at their uh, like weapons and all, they knew that they will be killed. But being a soldier, it is their duty to accomplish what they are supposed to do. So duty here is also one of the theme of the poem. And the last one we have is honor and respect. The poet wants the memory of the soldiers of the Light Brigade to live forever, to be honored and to be respected by every citizen whom they had been fighting for. Let us read the poem. Have a leak, have a leak, have a leak onwards, all in the valley of death, wrote the 600. Forward, the Light Brigade. 
charge for the guns," he said. Into the valley of death rode the six hundred. Forward, the light brigade was there. A man dismayed, not though the soldier knew someone had blundered. Dares not to make reply. Dares not to reason why. Dares but to do and die. Into the valley of death rode the six hundred. Cannon to the right of them, cannon to the left of them, cannon in front of them, volleyed and thundered, storm at with shot and shell, boldly they rode and well, into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell, rode the six hundred. Flas all their sabers bare, flas as they turn in air, sabring the gunners there, charging an army. While all the world wondered, plunged in the battery smoke, right through the line they broke. Cossack and Russian, reel from the saber stroke, shattered and sundered. Then they rode back, but not the six hundred. Cannon to the right of them, cannon to the left of them, cannon behind them, volleyed and thundered. Storm at with sword and shell, while horse and hero fell. They that had fought so well came through the jaws of death. Back from the mouth of hell, all that was left of them, left of six hundred. When can their glory fade? All the wild charge they made, all the world wondered. Honor the charge they made, honor the light brigade. Noble six hundred. Um. Okay. Now, before I explain the first uh, stanza, let me give some introduction. So, the Battle of Balaklava during the Crimean War was fought on twenty fifth October eighteen fifty four between the English and the Russian forces. The Light Brigade was the name of a British brigade that was engaged in a frontal attack against a well set and well equipped Russian cavalry. Now, in the first and the second line of the first stanza, we see half a league. So, what is half a league? A league is an old way to measure distance, and it was equal to about three miles. So, half a league is roughly a mile and a half. And it explains that the cavalry, the soldiers on the horses, move a mile and a half in a single move. Now, in the third line, all in the valley of death. What does it suggest? This line suggests that the cavalry soldiers were in a losing battle and that they might lose their lives in the battle. The battle was like the valley of death for them. And as we know that this poem is based on a true incident from the Crimean War, where a commanding officer gave an order that led the hundreds of soldiers ending up in their uh, that deadly situation. And in the next line, wrote the six hundred. We can see that uh, the soldiers, the light brigade, every, not everyone is going onward. So the commander was like commanding them to move forward. The rhythm of this stanza sounds like of a galloping horses, and it gives the impression that the horses were unstoppable. And this strong, relentless rhythm creates a fast pace, imitating that of the cavalry. And also the line "All in the valley of death." It sounds sinister, but through this line, uh, this line can be reflected in the Bible that says, "Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil." Psalm twenty-three. Using this biblical references makes the poem seems solemn and significant. Okay, the next two lines. Forward the light brigade, charge for the guns. He said. Here in this line, we can see or we learn that the commanding officer is speaking here and commanding his soldiers to move onward. And in the last second, uh, the last two lines of the stanza, into the valley of that rode the six hundred. Here, Tennyson metaphorically described the place of battle as the valley of death. This is a powerful image as it suggests that. That is all around man, and that they cannot escape it.
The Russian gunmen were at the head of the valley, looking down from a strong vantage advantage point at the cavalry. The British had little hope of victory. The valley is forever uh, defined forever uh, by the fallen men, and now it belongs to death. And also, repetition uh, in this stanza creates a sense of impending gloom and the idea that what is going to happen is inevitable no one can avoid it or no one can escape from what is going to happen uh, to them on to the second stanza we have here for words the light brigade was there a man dismayed not though the soldier knew someone had blundered there's not to make reply there's not to reason why there's but to do and die into the valley of death wrote the 600 so from the first line we can see that uh, we can see the, um, the commander repeating the command from the line 5 and it shows that the commanding officer is determined that there is no going back from this line we can see that the commanding officer was very much very much determined that nobody should be going back everyone have has to move forward was there a man dismayed the soldiers really realized the order was a mistake the order coming from their commanding officer was a mistake but do what they are told because it is their duty to obey orders the poet here admires the bravery and the sacrifice of the men because they were determined to obey orders even though they knew that was likely to happen to them and he thinks that the world should recognize their bravery and appreciate their sacrifice. Uh, not though the soldier knew someone had blundered. The poem describes a disastrous battle between the British cavalry, cavalry as I mentioned before, soldiers on horseback, and the Russian forces during the Crimean War. A misunderstanding mean that the light brigade was ordered to advance into a valley surrounded by enemy soldiers. The cavalry, the soldiers on horses, were only armed with swords, swords, and whereas the Russian soldiers had many artilleries and different guns, the light brigade were virtually defenseless against their enemies, and many of them were killed in that battle. There's not to make reply, there's not to reason why, there's but to do and die. The rhyme and repetition of these three lines emphasize the soldiers' obedience and sense of duty, even though they knew they will almost uh, certainly be killed in the battle. The poet seems to be shocked and like in disbelief by the stupidity of the order but this does not diminish or this does uh, this does not uh, or have negative impact on his respects for the soldiers who did their duty let's move on to the third stanza cannon to the right of them cannon to the left of them cannon in front of them volleyed and thundered Storm at with sought and sell, boldly they wrought and well, into the jaws of death, into the mouth of health, wrought the six hundred. From this line, we can see that the soldiers were surrounded by enemy cannon on the left, right, and front. And here, the repetition of the words cannon sounds like explosives. The poet made it clear that they were surrounded by powerful weapons and that there was very little chance of them surviving. And the next line, volleyed and thunder. This word, volley from cannon suggests a round of firing, simultaneous discharge of number of missile weapons. So these huge walls of cannons all around them are firing and making a sound like thunder. Storm at which sought and self. So the soldiers in the light brigade were being stormed at by gunfire. The thought, bullets and cell. Cell means cell is like big explosive fire from cannons. Okay, the thought and cell are a violent, noisy, and then destructive force that reminds the speaker of a storm.
boldly they wrote and wear well even though they were uh, like uh, storm with the shot and shell of cannons these guys this uh, brave light brigade were not scared of the gunfire in fact they wrote bravely even though it seemed more and more like a suicide mission for them now the poet admires the soldiers because they were brave and skillful despite the horrors they faced so this is this shows us how heroic this cavalry of the light uh, cavalry of the light brigades were and in the last three lines into the jaws of death into the mouth of hell wrote the 600 now the valley of death becomes the jaws of death and the mouth of hell it was as if the soldiers were riding into the mouth of Ferris's monster that they could not escape from and they would be killed by it. The jaws of death brings an image of like inescapability, not escapable. The man had been gripped by a monster and death was waiting for them. And the mouth of hell, the mouth of hell, hell also brings an image of seer or very clear horror. It is as if the earth has opened up to swallow men and they will die terribly. The man's life had been snatched from them suddenly and violently. And also the repetition of 600 in its stanza gives the idea of the large number of men involved. It also creates an image of a chaotic battle. The fourth stanza Flus all their sabers bear, flus as they turn in air, sabring the gunners there, charging an enemy, while all the world wonders. Plunge in the battery smoke, right through the line they broke, Cossack and Russian, reel from the saber stroke, shattered and sundered. Then they rode back, but not, not the 600. So from the first two lines, we can see the repetition of the word flus. The word flus with its quick sounding vowel gives us a sense of the speak of the attack and of death. So flus here, it gives us the idea how quick the speed of the attack and how quick the speed of death was. The rhyme here creates a powerful image of the soldiers using their swords. And the third line, sabring the gunners there. So the third line here reminds us that the cavalry, the soldiers of the light brigade, were only having swords against the Russian soldiers with guns. Uh, and, the, and those soldiers of the light brigade, they were causing or inflicting injury to the enemy soldiers using their um, swords. Saber in the first line of this stanza means swords and with their bare swords they were attacking the enemies so the next line all the world wonder so this fifth line it could mean that the people were surprised and the people marvel at their at the bravery of the light brigade soldiers and also wonder why they had been sent on the attack sent on the church Plants in the battery smoke right through the line they broke. So uh, plants here help us to imagine the utter despair of a person when uh, like a person is consumed by smoke. But still then also help us to appreciate the bravery and the courageousness of the light brigade. Uh, because this, the soldiers of the light brigade, they rode into the smokes from the Russian guns and they broke through the line of the enemy soldiers which is very much appreciable so the next line Cossack and Russian Cossack is a warrior from southern Russia Russia which is already now Ukraine um, so the enemy the Cossack and the Russian soldiers they were uh, um, they were incapable uh, of standing up because uh, they had been attacked by the swords of the light brigade and they were cut into pieces. Setter and sunder. The alliteration in this 
line sounds wrong. However, the onomatopoeic, that which is an imitative word, setter helped us to imagine that the soldiers of the Light Brigade had been attacking the Cossack and the Russian soldiers, and those enemy soldiers were broken down or had been defeated by the uh, soldiers of the Light Brigade. Then they wrote back, but not not the 600. So from this line, we could see that the light brigades had already done what they are supposed to do. They attacked the enemy, they killed some of them, and then they came back victorious. But not every one of the 600 soldiers of the light brigade came back safe. Some of them had already died. On to the fifth stanza, cannon to the right of them, cannon to the left of them, cannon behind them, volleyed and thundered, storm at which sought and set, while the horse and hero felt. They that had fought too, they, they that had fought so well, came through the jaws of death, back from the mouth of hell, all that was left of them, left of 600. So the opening of this stanza is very much similar to the opening uh, lines of the stanza 3. But now the soldiers, they were not attacking the enemies. They already uh, are retreating. The, re the repetition emphasized the consistent attack on the troops. So the repetition of these three lines, three, uh, three lines, cannon, 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 it emphasized the consistent attack uh, on the light brigade by the Russian soldiers. And now the soldiers of the light brigade drove back and the Russian cannons now on the right, on the left and behind them. Now they were that their back was turned to the Russian soldiers, it began to volley and thunder. Volley means a number of big guns were fired simultaneously by the Russian soldiers at the back of the light brigades. Again, um, they were badly hit and many of the soldiers died heroically along with their horses. And the soldiers who had fought so well and whoever had survived came back even from the jaws of death and from the mouth of hell. So um, the sense of admiration touched with sadness in this paragraph. And the repetition uh, in the last part of the stanza reminds us that lives have been lost and makes the poem sound very sad. Coming to the last stanza, when can their glory fade? All the wild charts they made, all the world wondered. Honor the charts they made, honor the light brigade, noble six hundred. So the first line, when can their glory fade? This is a rhetorical question, and this rhetorical question challenges the reader by making them think about the futility of the um, deaths of the light brigade. This poem is all about the remembrance and all about learning from our mistakes where the light brigade comprising of 600 soldiers were uh, commanded to attack on the front line. The Russian soldiers who were very much equipped with uh, artilleries and all, cannons, artilleries and all. And the next line, all the wild turds they made. This line, it sounds a bit, a bit uh, dramatic and daring as well. Alfred Lord Tennyson really admires the soldiers who fought and wants his poetry to be a way of people knowing the stories of those light brigades who were uh, sacrificing their life courageously and brave, bravely for the cause of the land. Okay, and in the remaining lines, the poet is asking the readers to honor the soldiers of the Light Brigade because they died nobly in discharging their duty in spite of knowing that that, that was certain for them. So, uh, it also sums up. In the last line, it also sums up the way the poet wants the soldiers of the Light Brigade to be remembered, including the ones who already died there. And the poet here uh, wants the people of Britain to honor the charts they made, charts mean attack, the attack they made, uh, and honor the Light Brigade and 
that Noble 600, the 600 Charles Light Brigades, who survived the battle and also who lost their life in that battle. So, the poet he wrote this poetry in order to honor the Light Brigades who had been bravely, courageously, and valiantly fighting for the land. That is United Kingdom. Conclusion: uh, It is important to uh, always keep in mind that uh, this poem is written by Alfred Lord Tennyson uh, to honor the 600 soldiers of the Light Brigade, and it is important that the memory of these men lives on and that their glory never fades. And um, the poet. Also calls upon readers to honor the attack or the charge they made, and honor the 600 soldiers of the Light Brigade for the duty, loyalty, and perseverance.